Hello, well today with the clogs I'm going to be putting on some rubber soles and uh, fixing the uppers. So good fun, quite exciting movement. I'm choosing some rubber soles really just to so like preserve the wood so I've just crudely cut these out and I'll be sticking them down but it will protect the, the wood a bit from abrasion and it will also make them nice and grippy as well. So I'm going to pop those little thin stick-on soles on and then I will be nailing on the uppers, which will be the rather interesting part. So get straight on and get these soles stuck. And for that, I'm going to be using the powerful one. <laughs> I use two of these Venia glues. This is the one where you need to use it in a well-ventilated area. Uh, but it is particularly good for a rather challenging job like sticking on the solver units. So in fact, just like with my other shoemaking videos, you'll see me come with a brush, put it on both surfaces, let them go tacky, and then join them together and give them a bit of a hammering to make sure they settle nicely. One could use iron as a sole um, item. You know, one could put either the horseshoes I showed in one of the earlier videos on a clog. So I could have reused those, but I didn't really fancy going around sounding clip clap, clip clap. Uh, so I thought no, better actually to use the rubber soles. They will, as I say, give a bit of grip. I noticed quite a few of the um, current day clog makers offer rubber soles and I can still see why it's quite a popular option so that's one of them I mustn't mix these up so they're obviously all left and right press from the inside and then to work your way out gets the air um, stops it being trapped in the middle what I'll also do is for good measure on the heels I'll pop in, I've got some of this little 16 millimeter tacks here, so I'll pop a few of those in. And I can sink them down uh, so they don't go marking floors or anything. Like that, just puts them nicely well below the surface. So I'll put a few of those in as well. So these are just little cone head. 16 millimeter tacks. Well, I've got the stick on soles there, so that'll give a bit of protection. And I've just put a couple of nails, one in each side here, um, in the same position as I had for when I was testing this. So I've done a little bit of trimming around it. What I'm going to do actually, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to drill some holes in here where I put the nails, because I don't want to obviously split this all the wood. If I have all my nails going along in the grain, the chances are something will split. So I thought, well, if I can slightly slope the nails sort of at different angles, that will help. Um, some people say blunt the tacks, and that sometimes helps the sort of tack avoid uh, the sort of grain and makes it sort of bluntly blast through the grain. So that's another possible option. Um, but anyway, I'm going to drill holes, very f small holes to help guide the tacks. And I think that will stop it splitting. So I'll, I'll do that next. I have a little Dremel. I want the sort of spacing of my tacks to look reasonably uniform. I mean, I need to have stronger tacks around the heel and up to the waist and around by the toes because in fact around by the toes it probably doesn't take so much pressure and I know some of the clock makers they actually use shorter tacks around the front end which I may end up doing actually and then longer stronger tacks around the heel and coming back because that's where the main support is so I'll see how I get on I think I'll try doing a few around here and take it from there
keep checking inside to make sure it's looking all right. I think it is. I'll carry on going around doing a bit of this and then I can do another try on. So I've been putting in some tacks just really down to the waist each side, a bit more in the instep here. So that's how it's going. So at the moment I seem to be okay, I haven't detected any splits, so I hope I'm doing all right there. So I'll carry on. I will carry on getting this side properly set, so the inside edge properly set, because I think I can probably pull the lever slightly more tighter on the outside. But I've just got the clog on and I'm sort of trying to stretch over and see where I might be able to take it in a bit more. And I think I can lose a little bit just along here. Not very much. Oh, maybe I can just mark it with a pen. So I think looking at it there, it's something like oops, three millimetres, not much more. And I can do that up to about there. So from that join to about there, I'll take about three millimetres off and try and pull that over. Oh, I've been trying to sit on the ground as well and I'm pretty convinced both times that I'm getting that sort of dimension. It's quite hard really. It slightly reminds me of watching people hem skirts. You sort of doing it yourself, it's quite tricky. If someone else was here now, they could probably say, oh yeah, Four millimetres, <laughs> job done. It's feeling okay on the foot actually. Yeah. I think I've got quite a high heel actually, all sudden done. I suddenly feel sort of like I'm a bit taller than I am. <laughs> I don't need to be any taller, I'm quite tall as it is. Mind you, both my sons are like six foot five, six foot six. So um, I can perhaps begin to get closer to their height. But I've just been trying it on the floor as well with my full weight because that's really your best guide. So I've taken a bit off there. I'm going to use <clears throat> some slightly smaller nails now. Um, so I've got these copper tacks which will do. If I need to blacken the heads of course I can, as in one of my earlier videos this month, I can use some liver of sulphur and just paint that on and it will turn them black. But um, yeah I think I'll use slightly well, I'll see how I go. I've got a good bit of thickness there, but it gets thinner around the toe. So I'll go to couple ones around the toe. I have also been cleaning up these old clog toe caps. So I'm not wanting to get them really bright and shiny all over. So I've given them like a partial polish up actually, but not gone in the bits there too much. So it keeps them nice and sort of muted, but quite usable hopefully. So I've just been drawing around with my pen where I think the toe ends. So I'm going to trim off that excess and then just carefully fold and wedge this lever in so I can nail it down. So I've just done like a positioning press fit around there. And what I decided would be actually quite a good way of doing this will be to put a bit of uh, glue around this toe and then press and manipulate it down fat as I can get it and then put the toe tin on with the other nails. So the toe tin of these little protector sheets that go on the front. So I'm just going to use a bit of the Renia Aquilim, not a lot, but enough to get like a tack ditto around there. Okay so I've glued this and what I'm now trying to do with mixed success is fold it down. So I'm sort of hammering it, make the glue bite, but then trying to also hammer out the wrinkles. And I'm sort of getting there. Now I've actually been able to get this down just by constantly manipulating it. And the lever has actually shrunk round so I can pop some tacks in here. I hope they don't get away in the way of my toe tin too much. But I think I'll just go for it and hope for the best. 
There you have it. Not bad actually considering. And finally I'm just positioning my toe tin to protect the toe and just hammering that on with a little row of nails. So I've tried to position it where I don't foul the nails underneath. And I'm again pre-drilling holes so I don't split things. And there you are, that's my toe tin all installed. So quite happy with that, that's that one done. So that's feeling fine. Just trying it on the ground. So I'll get on with the other one. Well, there you are, two finished clogs. I've tried them on, I've had a walk in them, they're very comfortable. I did have to slightly amend my so, uh, heel here, so I took a bit of a shaving off the heel to get the height down in order to raise the toe spring a bit more. It has a, like a bit more of a rolling action with the clogs. Anyway, yeah, very good. Very interesting project i hope you enjoyed seeing all of that and how i made them it certainly makes me appreciate the sort of work and the skill that goes into making a pair of hand made clogs i mean it's taken me quite a long time this and i've had to fiddle and adjust quite a bit so i can see that a professional doing this you really could spend your lifetime perfecting it and getting you know so at your first rate at making clogs and um, so yeah I really appreciate them now in fact I'd rather like to own a nice pair of um, clogs made by an expert like Jeremy Jeremy Atkinson it'd be very nice take my hat off to the guy anyway hope you enjoyed this journey and I'll see you in the next video whatever that might be <laughs> okay then bye bye thanks very much for coming along with me and watching on this one bye bye <laughs>